Hey there, it's Pete C for Sample Library Review, and today I'm checking out the Liminal Bundle by Crocus Soundware. New developer Crocus Soundware has added to their Liminal range with the all new Chamber Strings 2. Now the bundle contains four libraries Chamber Strings 1 and 2, Winds, and finally Reads. Creating evocative and emotional textures has never been so easy. With an easy to use interface, simple yet intuitive controls and an abundance of samples, the liminal bundle is perfect if you need to create underscore that is bursting with life. The liminal bundle downloads at 9.8 gigabytes and features four volumes, a whole range of articulations, many snapshots for each instrument and it uses the full contact 6.7.1 or better. The Liminal Bundle normally sells for $240 and is currently on sale for $120. Whenever I learn a new instrument, the first thing I do is pop over to the website and all the information you need about this instrument is there. But loading it up, it looks a bit, I'm not going to say confusing because I love instruments where you just kind of play around. Uh, but I've learned a couple of things as I go. So if I play it out of the box, this is the default chamber string setting. I'm just going to hold a single chord and just spread it out a bit. So you can hear there are samples that are repeating or um, kind of like sort of waving around a bit and it creates a texture. But if I was to play a chord progression, um, let's do something. It doesn't sound very expressive. And this is why I'm doing it this way, because there's a bit of a learning curve and I spent a while messing around with the mod wheel, which does nothing. And then I started thinking the instrument's very quiet, but it's all to do with this little triangle. So the first thing I did was I actually did a CC on the main volume, but the triangle is actually tied to CC7. You can adjust the volume so you suddenly have a more expressive instrument. And then the red one is all about reverb. So I can stick that on, I'll do it on CC14. So suddenly, again, the instrument is way more expressive. Now, I love the textures you can create when you've got reverb combined with the uh, volume. So it's got the making of sort of just gorgeous underscore. And I always say, go on the website and check out the demos. They do sound absolutely gorgeous, like the video demos. Now, underneath we have all of these different articulations and there are different controls. So to turn an articulation on, you just click on the articulation. So it's come on. And there are some articulation settings, and this is where it's really obvious. So I love the design. Um, you can change whether the sample goes in reverse or not. Uh, the velocity curve, the panning, um, you can turn the LFO on and off, and then the LFO frequency and adjust the phase, the minimum volume, and then you've got your ADSR controls here. So you can 
adjust every sample, which is really, really useful because the samples contained really are excellent. So it's just a beautifully sampled instrument. But if you click on one of the dots, so if I turn all these off, the single dot is a solo performance. So I have a couple of those. And it's very responsive to velocity. So my velocities were a bit all over the place there. If you have a sample and it's got uh, three dots, that means it's an ensemble. So there is quite a lot of reverb going on there, so I'll bring that down. So there you go. Now there are core articulations and then underneath there's process articulations. So if I just load up one of the process ones. So there's more movement there. Let's just try a different. So that's a different sample. Uh, let's try a sort of wavy one. Let's go back off the reverb a bit more. There we go. That's a wavy one, um, just out of interest. Okay, it does seem to trigger that sample. Uh, let's try this one. That's some pretty cool textures going on. Um, let's go with this. Sounds great. And then like a sort of zigzag type situation. And of course, the idea is you just hold these down um, and just play a chord. So again, I'm just going to spread out a, an A minor chord. And the samples repeat. And it's, it is instant underscore. And then clicking around, um, so I love investigating, there's 
nothing else going on. But that's fine, because that's all you need. However, there are snapshots. So if I just double click on these, and you can see um, we've got evolving snapshots. So in this situation, because they're very velocity sensitive, I would actually globally change the velocity of my controller um, just to accommodate the softness because I love the soft evolving textures. Sounds cool. So let's try a few more. So we've got damaged hull. And they really come to life when you start using both controls at the same time. And I was using my sustain pedal there. Um, just going to turn that off. Uh, yeah, so let's go for Ocean Current. And you can install these properly, um, or you can just drag and drop them like I am now. So again, they're incredibly creative. Um, let's just go for processed impulse engines, why not? Got a really good stereo spread. I've uh, got n uh, noon. And let's just do. Uh, tension. Don't know what I was doing there. Uh, yeah, just took me on a bit of a tangent there. Then let's go for some swells, so some modern variations. Sounds really good. I'm not using the mod wheel tool on those. Let's just do some more pronounced variations. Yeah, 
Yeah, really like that. And then different, as more subtle variations. Let's do some textures. Um, let's just go straight in pronounced. I'll probably use the uh, mod wheel. And this is what I was talking about, sort of creating life, life, uh, life, life, lifelike textures, because it's all about performances. So you're injecting life into uh, whatever you're creating, uh, which is really, really cool. So lots of different presets. Now, part of the fun is just playing around with all this stuff. And yep, I did use a manual, but really it's a simple instrument to use once you understand where everything is. So nice and easy. And that's the first Chamber Strings. Now, I believe that was released around the start of April. So um, it's going to move down. Uh, yeah, so Liminal. Actually, let's go for Chamber Strings Volume 2. Um, so obviously, slightly different GUI, but we've got the same controls. Now, this time, the gain and dynamics are on the mod wheel. So I'm going to sign CC14 as it's right there in front of me. And again, if I just hold down Using the sustain, it's do a G major. So again, it's the same idea. However, everything's kind of um, just there in one place in terms of sort of controlling the samples, which is really, really cool. In fact, it sort of globally controls it and then you can adjust the samples on their own individually. So it's a bit of a, I wouldn't say a step up in design. So I had no problems once I learned how to use the first volume, uh, but straight out of the box, this is way more easier and of course there are different articulations and there's a lot going on and i love the little diagrams which really help so i know this is going to be sort of smooth but a bit bobbly So while the first volume is containing uh, loads of sounds, or does contain loads of sounds, uh, which sound brilliant and are perfect for underscore, straight out the box, the second volume is, like I say, just a bit easier to use. Um, so, whoops, I quite like that bounce. Let's go for something different. <laughs> Just sound really, really clean. Um, let's just go one more combination. Whoops. And again, you can see, I'll, I'll keep clicking on the uh, articulation. Um, all these dots. So these are the different samples for those articulations. So I'm going to change that sort of tremolo. Let's 
And you can see the playable range is really, really big as well, so... Okay, so it can get quite loud up there, uh, as I've just proved. So this one packs a lot more volume, um, and again, straight out of the box, you don't feel like it's a quieter instrument. But I absolutely love the control you have over the instruments. So again, very, very similar instrument, but if you go into the snapshots, again, you've got all of these different snapshots. Let's do um, Mark of Spectre. So, of course. I'm just holding down chords to hear the evolving nature. But you can hear how it's really well programmed and the samples are cut really, really well. Um, let's do evolving swells. Sounds gorgeous. Um, meandering bounces. Let's bring the reverb down a bit. Awesome. Um, Miando flat on is long. Let's do a pattern. Soupon. I love the stereo spread of that. And then we do, we've oh, got tremolo. Let's try that. And then finally, swells with rhythmic texture. So plenty of articulations to keep you going. Sorry, snapshots to start off with. And then You've got key switches down the bottom, and I read the menu, not the menu, sorry, the, uh... 
Yeah, I read the manual, and you're supposed to hold down a combination of key switches. So one is for the column, so I believe the red one will highlight the first column, and then you can turn on different articulations, but for some reason my controller's not let me do that, but that is what the key switches are all about. And it's probably just something really silly that I'm doing. Um, but yeah, just can't get it, but it's a really cool idea. So I'm sure that does work and I'll get told in the comments how to do that. So that is the Chamber Strings Volume 2. If we look at the winds, um, and you get the idea, it's a similar concept. Now, there's a lot more going on. So articulations are actually named as well. Um, and we've got the diagrams. And again, you can see they've all got ensemble and they've all got soloist. And to me, the left and the right I know you can pan them left and right, but it feels like they should be... That's the left sample, that's the right sample in the middle. Sorry, and that's the middle one. But I don't know. Um, but all I know, again, these sound ace. So, if I start it up, I've gone down a few octaves. <laughs> So again, um, I'm just going to set the CC automation and do the volume myself. And they do get quite loud. So it's the same idea. Um, but this time, so if I put the sustains on. You can hear the articulations, whoops, um, sort of really, really clearly and they're kind of like when you click on them, you know, again, what to expect. So it's not just from the pictures. So yeah, they sound great. So I'm going to jump in. Oh, just before we do that, we've got three tabs down here. We've got main, we've got the LFO, so you can change that straight away. And then you've got your ADSR. So if I go for some snapshots, um, let's do some fluttering. So I need to get more consistent with my uh, my velocities. So again, got quite loud there. Yeah, they sound really good. I think when I'm playing these in or using these in a composition, I'd be programming as opposed to relying on my playing. Um, because no matter what I'm holding down, if I sort of add a couple more, they are very responsive to velocity. And that's not a bad thing at all. Um, it's just part of the learning curve. So let's have a wobble. <laughs> Some cool sounds going on. Um, let's do reverse flutter overtones. Sounds 
sounds brilliant. Reminds me of a sort of Aztec death whistle, as it were. Um, so that's Braille. Whoops. Do not click. Because I didn't install them. Drag them over. I'm going to play a different chord. Seems to be hung up on D minor. Absolutely love these textures. Um, let's do some layers, and you can reverse the samples on the front window as well. So, yeah, nice and easy. Uh, let's do some swells, sustains. Brilliant. So that is liminal winds. And then last one I'm going to quickly look at is reeds. Okay, so we've got four instruments. We've got clarinet, English horn, oboe, bassoon. Uh, again, we've got the ensemble articulations, we've got the single ones, and then the sort of diagrams help us work out what's going on. And again, I'm going to do my assigning. I mean, obviously, you can use... I've got a... a um, mod, not a mod wheel, an expression pedal as well connected. I'm just not shuffling around to use it, but that's probably already assigned. I just like using CC1 for this. Okay, I'm not going to play D minor for the rest of the review. There we go. So that's the default reads. Again, you can adjust the sample. So it's the same idea, um, just presented slightly differently. Uh, yeah, so nice and straightforward. Reverb, why not? Let's assign it again, CC14. And then of course, you got your snapshots. So let's play some staccato. Nearly a D minor. That low end is awesome. It goes really, really low as well. That's incredible. That's not even as low down. Oh, yeah. I thought it might peak there. Um, let's bring it down. It's just a lot of... I don't know, probably just playing around the, the 30 hertz, 40 hertz. Proper sub bass territory anyway. Um, that's fine. Let's just go back up. Lovely. Now, uh, let's try vibrato. Thank 
cool. Let's do some evolving. So this is Voyager. Some swells, long variations for. Um, Mix burst. I could hold this one a lot longer. Uh, let's just do uh, F major. Sounds gorgeous. Um, through an F major seven there. Just try a few extensions. Uh, I'm allowed to do a D minor seven. Yeah, these are just gorgeous. Um, and the variations are separated by instrument. Let's go, go English horn. Yeah, I should probably uh, should probably let that play a little bit longer. That's some great sampling. Um, yeah, and there we go. So again, a lot of the fun is just playing around these presets and then building your own sounds. And I've got to admit, I'm, I'm really, really impressed. My final thoughts about the Liminal Bundle are, apart from the fact I really enjoy sort of playing around with these kinds of instruments. So you've got loads of different evolutions, you've got swells, you've got pulses. What I really love about this is the sampling is great to begin with. Um, with really, really good sampling, then the creativity can follow. So it's very, very clear, it's pristine. If you turn the reverb all the way off, You've got the dry samples you can play with so you can put this in any situation you want but i do like the ability to sort of blend in the reverb as you see fit so obviously there's ways you can automate that in uh but it's just great having it on there i love the control so it's not a big deal just to assign a cc or use a different controller um it's just I'm set up with two faders in front of me at the moment, so that's why I've done it that way. But when I opened the instrument up for the first time, I was a bit like, oh, um, it didn't look daunting, but I wasn't getting the sounds out that I heard in the videos. So using the manual and the support from the website was just really, really quick and easy. So the learning curve, there isn't a really big learning curve. And once you learn one instrument, you pretty much know the other three and you know what to expect, but you can create some really, really gorgeous textures and just, you know, add that human element. So I think they're really good value for money. I think there's plenty there to work with in terms of samples, articulations. Um, you can do so many different blends. You're never gonna use you know every single blend that these uh, this instrument has to offer uh, because it's going to take you I don't know years just to create every single manageable um, combination but 
that's again part of the joy so yeah it's a really fun instrument it's very creative very inspiring who do i recommend it's for if you do a lot of dramatic underscore these are brilliant and pretty much all of the videos i saw were this kind of dramatic underscore and once you get used to using them you're going to just be absolutely flying so yeah they sound great in their own right if you're going to start blending them with other libraries it's just going to create even more gorgeous textures so i think they're brilliant um the programming's great there's no pops or clicks when samples are repeated it doesn't go out of time it's all tempo sync to your daw you've got loads and loads of presets they're just quality instruments so do i recommend these instruments of course i do i make a lot of this underscore type music i do a lot of scandi uh, noir music and a lot of crime and tension and i just think these are absolutely perfect so big recommendation from me i always say use your ears decide if it's the kind of instrument you want to do uh, sorry want to use if you do trailer music for example like really loud bombastic it's probably not the library for you but again there are so many different applications if you do ambient music like say dramatic underscore crime drama um, if you've got a felt piano going on top of these sounds, you know, you're just going to create these gorgeous, beautiful compositions. So, yeah, huge recommendation from me. This is something I'm going to be using in probably my next project. And, yeah, can't wait to get started. All that leads me to say is thank you so much for checking out this review of the Liminal Bundle. And if you like what you heard, feel free to leave us a like on the video and a comment. Let us know what you think. And then subscribe to our channel, check out our other videos and head over to samplelibraryreview.com. There's me being quite demanding. Have a great day and take care.